Hello and welcome to News Click. It seems a day doesn't go by without news of a fresh scandal revolving around the Commonwealth Games. A pun a day seems to be the order with the Commonwealth Games, the Very Wealthy Games, the Uncommonwealth Games and so on. To discuss the various issues around the impending Commonwealth Games, we have with us on News Click today Shankar Raghuraman, Associate Editor, Times of India. Welcome, Shankar. Thank you. At one level, if you went by the opinion of the man on the street, ever since it was announced that the Commonwealth Games was coming to Delhi, I think people, the fixers of Delhi, were all lining up for what they knew was going to be a bounty. And that is what has happened now. So should we be surprised? No, I don't think we should be surprised. It was always to be expected that this would happen. It's sad that our expectations have come true. But no, I won't say we should be surprised about it. There, there is an expected expenditure of something like, I don't know the sum now, the latest figure is 18,000... 28,000. 28,000 crores are supposed to be spent. If you combine what is being spent on the games and what is being spent on the infrastructure uh, around which clearly brings a lot of money issues uh, to the fore. But is a perception right which seems to get conveyed in the media that all this has suddenly started happening over the last two months or three months? Oh, most certainly not. Uh, clearly, this has been happening for a long time. In fact, about a year ago, the CAG, the Comptroller and Auditor General, came out with a report on the level of preparedness for the Games and warned even at that time that things were being left till too late and that there would be all kinds of hassles with that. Uh, what the CAG obviously couldn't say, but which must have been understood by anybody who knows how these things work, was that if you leave things till too late, then you can justify paying inordinate sums of money because you say it's too late now to negotiate, it's too late to bargain, we have to make the best of what we have. And that does seem to have happened in a lot of cases, where sums allocated to specific purposes have been way above the norm, but have been explained away on the grounds that it was, there was no time for any negotiations. The argument now being advanced uh, from government circles is, we understand that there is a problem, we will look into it when the time comes, but meanwhile, let us get on with the games and we will do all the inquiries and so on after two months. Uh, isn't that just another uh, license to people to say, let's do what we can in the next two months because after that, mm -hmm. uh, there is going to be inquiries and whatever paperwork they may even be for an inquiry later will disappear in these two months? I think there are uh, two issues here. One is that if you are suggesting <clears throat> that whatever the current authorities might have done, they should be allowed to continue because there is no alternative, you are in effect saying that India's bid for these Commonwealth Games in 2003 was based on the competence of a handful of people. That is a shameful admission for a country of a billion to make. That's at one level. At another level, as you said, you're also telling these people, okay, here's, we're giving you two months time to clean up whatever People's trails people. there might be. And uh, that's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is we know how things happen in India. If the games go off smoothly and if India does reasonably well in terms of medals and so on, we all know that this thing is going to be forgotten by mid-October. Is there an argument now uh, and there seem to be some noises or moves within the government to appoint some kind of a supervisory body or an apex body which will now oversee the remaining part of uh, the functions. Is there any scope of something like that happening? I doubt whether that will happen because as you said, the whole pitch from the government seems to be to say our focus right now is in getting things done and the people who are at the helm are the only people who can do it. There is nobody else who can replace them because it is too late for somebody to come in and right. look at things afresh. So I doubt whether anything, 
I mean, there might be a cosmetic uh, supervisory function allocated to somebody, but beyond that, I can't see. And even if that happens, it's not likely to have any impact on. Uh, in terms of getting the infrastructure ready, the sports facilities uh, ready, where do you think we stand? Well, anybody who goes around Delhi, it's evident where, what the state of preparedness is. And I think uh, we should, to compare it with international benchmarks, I mean, Beijing 2008 is probably an unfair benchmark to compare it with, because that's probably the most successfully organized games ever. Uh, but nevertheless, Beijing was ready for the games one year before the games were to happen. They had a sort of dry run in <clears throat> July, August of 2007, because that was the time of the year when the games would be held. So they sure. checked, they went through pollution checks, what kind of flowering would happen that season and so on and so forth. We are nowhere near that level of organization. But even London, which is to host the Olympics in 2012, it has pretty much all of the infrastructure ready now, two years ahead of schedule. So, I mean, that's the kind of preparation that is normally expected. Right. In India, we got the bid in 2003 and no work had started before 2008. So, all of five years was just spent in paperwork. The saying going around the city is that the Commonwealth Games is going to be something like a typical Indian wedding. That there will be all kinds of confusion till the day before, but uh, when the bridegroom arrives, then somehow the wedding is going to happen. Is that the way we are going to see the Commonwealth Games run? Well, uh, yeah, sure. The wedding probably will happen. Yeah. But whether it's necessarily a happy wedding is a separate question. I mean, which is a question which applies also to Indian weddings in general. In general. <laughs> I think in the middle of all this, with the corruption, with infrastructure not being ready, uh, the one thing that everyone seems to have forgotten about is the Indian sportsmen who are going to compete in these uh, events. You get small news items in the corners of newspapers showing how sportsmen don't have basic facilities, they don't have equipment, shooters don't have ammunition, badminton players don't have shuttlecocks, hockey players don't have grounds. Uh, that seems to be the last concern on anybody's mind. Absolutely, because as you said, the people whose faces lit up when the game's bid was successful were the fixers. And the fixers clearly aren't bothered about what happens to the sportsmen. And that, I think, is also where... See, there's an attempt to make it seem like 2008 was China's chance to showcase itself to the world. 2010 is India's chance to do the same. Now, China's showcasing itself to the world was not just about a beautiful Beijing. Right. It was also about having arrived as a sporting power on the scene. Exactly. They topped the medals tally at Beijing. I don't think anybody in his wildest dreams would expect right. the same of India. Right. And so, if you're hosting the games, were part of a larger program of really inculcating a culture of sports in India, I think few people would have an objection to that. Sure. But the problem is, I mean, let me put this in perspective. The uh, budget allocation for sports this year is about 3,100 crore, of which about 2,000 odd crore is for the Commonwealth Games, and just about 1,000 crore is for sports. Right. So that shows you the sense of proportion we have. Yeah. I mean, 1,000 crore a year is basically 10 rupees per Indian. That's right. And the bulk of the allocation for the Commonwealth Games is also in stadia and infrastructure. Absolutely. And we don't know the extent to which sports people are actually going to be able to use these. Yes. If we know the, if we've seen the condition of the facilities, the status of the facilities we have had even in this city since the Asian Games, and the extent to which they've been used by sports people, I think the future doesn't bode very well. Not at all. Uh, the fixers, their eyes lighting up with the contracts and so on, one can understand. But what is the sports ministry uh, doing in its role for the Commonwealth Games? Can we see any signs of it being working towards advancing sports in this country at all? Well, see, uh, as long as the... Uh, frankly, I won't blame the sports ministry in particular because I think it's part of a larger government understanding of how sports is to be nurtured. Now, there are innumerable examples across the globe, from China to Cuba to Russia and so on, of how making sport a mass activity pays off. That's right. But uh, there's no indication that India is willing to learn from that lesson. We still seem to believe that 
you know spending a few crore on one stadium in Delhi or one in Chennai or Calcutta is going to do the trick and it clearly isn't. I mean we've been trying this strategy for decades now without any success uh, but there's no there is no attempt at massifying sports if I might say so. So the Commonwealth Games is going to be one more evidence in the long series of corruption, incompetence and getting national priorities completely wrong. Thank you Shankar. Thank you.